Hey gamers, I'm Steve Nash. And I'm Felicia, and this is our review of Asria. I think that's Syria. Asria is a type of no, venereal disease. I knew you were gonna In Assyria, players are trying to grow their temples and expand their tribe's area. In a box, you'll get a board which forms Assyria and is also used to keep track of points, camels, and offering to the three dignitaries, some wooden pieces for each of the four players, food cards which you'll use to feed your villages, and expansion cards which tell you how many huts you get this turn. The game is played in three reigns. The first has two rounds and the other have three rounds. Here's how to set up the game. There are different starting locations to choose from depending on the number of players you are. Also, the map can get smaller if fewer players are playing. For this review, we'll be playing three players, so the last two rolls will not be used. Each player places a temple base in the starting location shown in the rulebook. Then each player places a disc on the camel track, the score track, then each other discs are shuffled and placed randomly on the turn order track. Each player also receives one food card. You are now ready to start the first green. At the start of a turn, you'll flip over four food cards and place them in the order of lowest to the highest under the turn order track. Then you'll do this again. Place those under the four cards there. Now the first player takes his disc on the turn track and places it on the new turn track order. Depending on where he places this disc, he will take the two cards under his disc. The second player does the same and so on. This will form a new turn order for the expansion phase of this turn. Once farming has been done and everyone has their food cards face up on the board, they each get huts according to the number on the expansion card. For the first turn, it's always four. So now, in turn order according to the track, players place their huts in hexes which are adjacent to the other hex they control, making sure not to cover the food icon there. Once all the players have placed their huts, they now must supply the huts with food with their cards. The cards must match the icon in the hexes and some can feed more than one hut. If you did feed a hut by discarding your food card, move that hut onto your food icon. Unfed huts are destroyed and removed. If you have three huts in a circle, you can also build a well inside for free. Now it's time to score the points. Points are awarded for huts, temples and wells. The huts on the river hexes bring you two camels each. So if you have three huts, then you'll get six camels. You only get camels for controlling river hexes. Now you score victory points. You get two points for each hut between the two rivers. One point for each other hut not on a river hex. One point for each tile your temple has. And points for wells depending on their current reign. Once all players have scored their points, they move on to the last phase of the turn. In the last phase of the turn, you'll be offering your camels to dignitaries. Trade them in to build temple tiles, get food, or go up on the multiplier track. Everything is nicely written on the board for each type of offering you can do. If you want to get a food card, it costs two camels. You can also buy a plow card, which is a wild card. You can spend up to three camels to go up on the multiplier track for each camel spent. You can buy another level to your temples or start a new one. Each layer will cost you camels, or you can give them as offering to dignitaries. Let me explain the dignitaries. The top one costs four camels. If you choose to spend four camels for him, place one of your huts at the top available spot. The middle dignitary costs three camels and the bottom costs two camels. You can place as many huts as you want, as long as you have enough huts and camels to do so. You can also choose to keep your camels for further turns. Once everyone has spent their camels, the turn ends and a new one begins. The first player becomes last and the last player becomes first. Flip over new food cards, flip over another expansion card, place your huts, feed them, score points and spend your camels. That's basically it. Now let me explain the floodings. This is where you can get lots of points. Between each rain a flood occurs. When this happens you remove all huts on the river hexes and you remove all huts off the food icon making them hungry again. During the flood, you also score points for your dignitaries. The top one will give each hut three points, plus bonus points for those who have two or three huts there. The middle one will give you two points for each hut in a free plow card if you don't already have one. The bottom one will give you one point and one camel for each hut there. The player with the most huts also gets points equal to the total value of the expansion cards and then removes the highest card. The second player does the same, and then the player with the fewest huts as well. 
for the multiplier track, you multiply your temple sites with that number. So if you have three temple sites and your disc is on times three, then you get nine points. All discs go back to zero after a flood. This ends a rain. Remember, there are only three rains in the game. At the end of the last rain, you get extra points for each temple tile you built. One point if you have a plow card in front of you, and one point for each two camels you have not spent. The player with the most points wins the game. It's a great game with lots of strategy, many ways of scoring points, good player interaction, and a good rulebook. We love the fact that there are reminders written on the board and in the back of the rulebook. You also have a limited supply of huts, so you have to use them wisely. We did, however, find that the top dignitary was really powerful and gave lots of points. But in the end, it's always a pretty close game. The wells stay on the board for the entire game and can really hinder other players since you can't build temples next to them. We liked it and we're giving it a 7.5 on 10.